Hey, hey. <laughs> I think we're live. Hey. There we go. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Bobby Cool, Daddy Slick Breezy, and we are back with another Dynamic Discs updates with Jeremy Rusco for the January time. And it's 2019. We are super excited. Before we get started, though, I want everyone to know that we have some discs to give away. I have a Westside Disc World, a Trilogy Challenge uh, Latitude 64 Musket, a Westside Discs Warship, and a uh, Trilogy Challenge Dynamic Discs Patrol. Now, how this is going to work is I'm going to give these out throughout the broadcast, and it's gonna you're going to have to know some of the details from the broadcast, so make sure you're paying attention. These are some of the testers that Anthony and Danny use when they do video reviews and things like that. So they've got about eight or nine, ten throws on them, but other than that, they are good to go as far as discs. Pay also, attention. Pay attention. Also, this is your Pop time quizzes. to hear straight from the man himself, Jeremy Rusco. If you have any questions at all about dynamic discs or molds or plastics or anything like that, he is here to answer your questions. So get those in on the YouTube ch on the YouTube video in the YouTube chats. I'm going to do my best to use one of my two laptops I have right here. Yeah, that's pretty fancy, <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> We got the whole setup Didn't here. You asked for another one this morning too. I know. How many know. laptops do you need? <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna grab the question, grab the questions, and put them on a little document here, and we'll get those answered for you. But right now, let's hear what do you got going on, Jeremy Rusco? Well, my voice is a little hoarse. Uh, I had a had a late night, early morning. And you're probably a little sad, too. A little sad about the Chiefs, the outcome of the Chiefs game, but that was one heck of a game to be at, a special yeah, experience for sure. And I um, wish the Chiefs were going to the Super Bowl, but I guess there's always next year. There's always uh, next year. Just like we're always working on something. They're I always think working. The, the yeah. Chiefs are always going to be working on going to the Super Bowl now. So uh, amazing game and amazing experience, and uh, looking forward to many more good years for the Chiefs. So. Yeah. Um, Speaking of football. What do we got? We got a disc golf experience at Mile High Stadium coming up June 29th. Just wanted to remind everybody that uh, this thing is actually happening. We're looking forward to going to Denver, Colorado, and uh, hope you want to come join us. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. Did you say the date already? June, June 29th. 29th. Yes, the date is June 29th. Hint, hint. Okay, so yes, this is going to be super excited. I was actually putting together a promo looking at some of the footage from the old stadium events and just it was just so cool it's just so cool to be able to do that in a football stadium and now we're taking it to colorado so it's going to be great stuff yeah for sure uh new year new changes hard yep. to believe that it's already 2019 yep. and uh and stuff's happened we've got some some more new release stuff that just came in um speaking of some changes though we've got a change at our downtown retail store and our online operation uh we've got jackie morris who has just recently taken over as our downtown uh, retail store manager and we are super excited for the opportunity for her and uh if, if you've got anything that you feel like our retail store has been missing out on whether that be online or whether that be actually in the store um, jackie is uh is the one in charge and we are uh, really, really thrilled that she wanted to step into this role. She's been with Dynamic Discs for uh, quite a few years, and I think it's over four years now. And she started out um, at the retail store and then started taking over our customer service and has done an amazing job with customer service. And now she is our uh, retail store manager. So welcome, Jackie, to a new role. Um, another thing that we're changing for this year is we've done warehouse tours for, uh, I think, several years now. Um, but we wanted to make sure that people really knew that you can come visit our warehouse, um, come get a tour. We, we've done it where it's been a $20 um, warehouse uh, fee, I guess you would say, to, to actually register your, yourself or your group. Um, but with that, you also got some customized stuff, a customized Dimax disc that, that has your name on it in a warehouse tour, um, cool graphic on it, as well as a lanyard and a bag tag. Um, which is still going to, going to be an option for uh, for this year. But if you want to come check out the warehouse, um, go to our retails, uh, our dynamicdisc.com website, click on warehouse tours or search warehouse tours, um, get signed up. And we look forward to having you come check things out. And also, in addition to that, if you want to come test any of our team edition um, prototypes for this year, you can come here, come, come drop your ID off, go to the driving range and throw whatever you want to throw. Um, and we're going to get a tester bin for any and all discs in the dynamic latitude and west side lineup so that you can just check and try anything out. So um, these are some great discs. We've been getting some really good feedback. Uh, super, super happy with the way that, that these uh, discs are being received by our team players. I thought it was going to be hard to 
uh, match or beat or be close to last year's uh, releases with the Explorer um, and the Ballista Pro for Latitude. And then on the dynamic side, the Maverick, the Captain, uh, the Getaway, those are really tough to uh, tough to beat. But this is a great, great year, great lineup as well. So come check them out. Come check us out at the warehouse. We would love to love to show you around. And speaking of some of those new things, what, what were you guys talking about on this thing earlier? <laughs> So, so this is this is a this is a Danny creation here. Not the disc. You'll get here in a minute. So this is the sheriff, and a lot of people love the sheriff, but a lot of you would like to have your discs in air plastic. So this is the new Lucid Air Sheriff, right? And when do we even have a release date on this? It's coming. It's coming. Okay. So, but, but before we started recording the broadcast, uh, uh, Danny came up with. If you have to look at it, this is the share share if the sheriff. So that's patent pending for Danny uh, on that. So, <laughs> so anyway, so I know a lot of you get excited about the air plastic. So that'll be, and in fact, I want to, I want to test out this one because I, I like the sheriff, yeah. but I think the air might be better for me. So, but yeah, the sheriff goes a long, long, long way. Um, you know, we've been talking about the, 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 the inability to get standard white putters uh, and or standard colors in putters and a whole bunch of a whole bunch of solid color color putters showed up and are um, now available so you spoke we heard we listened and we got stuff that's here now for you so that's all i got on that for right now all right so giveaway time remember at the beginning of the uh, broadcast i said you got to pay attention for the giveaway so i'm going to be watching the chat while i'm here's the question what day is the disc golf experience at Mile High? Wait, wait, wait how do you say? Yeah, it? Mile High. At Mile High Bronco Stadium, or however they say it. <laughs> what day are we going out there to play? We said it. I repeated it several times. Put it in the chat. And while you're putting that in, I'm going to ask ask a few of the questions that have already come in. Is that cool? Perfect. All right. So this one is from Chase Underwood. How often do the Commander bags, Ranger bags, Commander and Ranger bag color options get changed on the online store? Uh, it really, there's no set schedule, no set frequency. And it ultimately just depends on, uh, it's too many variables, I guess, to, to go over, but we are, we are working on some new colorways for sure. Um, don't have a set delivery date for stuff and look forward to sharing more with you as uh, more bag colors become available. And essentially through all our bag lineup, we're looking to update some colors. So we know you guys are ready for some new colors out there and they're going to come at some point. The legendary E wants to know when is that Resco in the bag coming? Oh, and we're going to do, so we started a series uh, last year and we only got one done, but we're going to put more time into it. We're going to do a, a little series of in the bags for the people that work here. And I think we need to include you too. Sure. That's pretty much just a getaway. And <laughs> And that's it. That's it. Oh, well, away, it'll, it'll be a know, short one. Maybe it'll uh, just be an Instagram deputy. story then. Yeah. <laughs> a Snapchat uh, in the back. And Maverick. Uh, All right. So we're working on that. So a lot of you got the dates coming in. So here in a minute, I'm going to pick one. Keep those coming in. Uh, uh, and you're looking at refreshing the in the bags out in Arizona. Right? Absolutely. For, yeah. the, for the touring pros and the pros, we're going to be refreshing those. Yes. Anthony has a question from the gallery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have some at Cedar Hill yeah. Chill. So we've got some in the bags coming for sure. Next question is from Jeff. He says, what disc will be in the 2019 Trilogy Challenge? And will they be overstable or understable numbers of, oh, wait, understable and the numbers of the disc? What were okay. the numbers? So we were intending for the Vandal to be a 2019 standard stock release disc for dynamic discs. But the Vandal is going to be a our Trilogy Challenge uh, driver between the three, the three brands. This disc has been getting a lot of really good feedback over the last couple of weeks as it's been out there. Um, and then for Latitude 64, the Keystone is going to be uh, one of the Trilogy Challenge discs. And this one is also, uh, basically, if you like the Deputy but want something that's not quite as understable as the Deputy, uh, the Keystone is the answer, which this one is actually going to be available for the United States Amateur Match Play Championship as well. So it's not just the Trilogy Challenge where you can get the Keystone. Um, it'll be a different plastic version between uh, between those different events. And then for Westside, there will not be a new release um, in the Trilogy Challenge for Westside, it, but it will be the only way that you'll be able to get uh, TP or tournament plastic in the Gatekeeper. And the Gatekeeper is a uh, a great, great, great mid-range disc. And again, the Trilogy Challenge will be the only way uh, that you'll be able to get that in 
tournament plastic. Got it. All right. So now to uh, someone had a a good question. I'm trying to see where it is. I can't. I think Sean says, "How do the giveaways work? Is it random draw right from from right answer or a certain number?" So the the I have done giveaways a lot in the past. I tried to do the first person that says something. I've tried to do the tenth person that says something. And there's always a, a a technology glitch in there. That someone says, I was the first one. No, no, I wasn't. I've had people send me screenshots, show me timestamps and all this stuff. So I'm just going to randomly draw somebody. I'm going to pick a name and I will uh, reach out to you and get you the patrol. That's the one on the top. So we'll do a patrol giveaway. Brilliant. So I'm gonna, I'll am randomly pick somebody from the date there. From picking that, by the way, it's June 29th. Uh, that's when the uh, uh, Disc Golf Experience event is happening, and I'll pick somebody that picked the right one from the chat before the night or before the broadcast is over. All right, let's move on. Moving on, Monkey Island Open. I could not believe when I heard that the Monkey Island Open, which is a as two, it's two one day events here in Emporia. Um, I believe it's March like 23rd, 24th, 22nd, whatever weekend that is. And that event typically sells out in late February or early March. And it is already sold out with people on the waiting list, um, which to me speaks a lot about where I feel like disc golf is going this year. There seems to be more excitement than ever in the off season and and people are hungry to play tournaments. Um, it appears that way anyway, and we're excited to have 200 disc golfers in town for, um, the Monkey Island Open, and also wanted to let everybody know that this is, um, on our end, going to be the first uh, Grow Disc Golf 5,000, 10,000 um, ace event. So uh, players are going to have an opportunity to hit an ace that can be worth $5,000, or if you throw anything from Dynamic Discs, Latitude 64, or Westside Discs, it would be a $10,000 ace. Ooh, doggy. Why did I? Why did I not sign up? I don't know. Um, I'm due for an ace. It's been like since 2009, I think, since I had my it's last ace. It's been like ace. since for never for me. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, if you want to find out how your event can become a 5K, 10K Grow Disc Golf um, ace challenge event, um, check out growdiscgolf.com and get your event registered. The hole can be as short as 295 feet. So um, there's plenty of holes out there that uh, people can ace at 295 feet. Get signed up. Also, speaking of tournaments, wanted to make sure. Real quick, before you do that, we threw something on Danny real quick. This isn't in the sheet. If Danny, if you could go ahead and bring up my laptop so I can show them this URL real quick. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that um, we are wanting to make sure people are aware about is our tournament uh, sponsorship giveaway. And if you go to uh, dynamicdisc.com slash tournament hyphen sponsorship, you will be able to uh, find this and or if you click on sponsorship but scroll down a little bit and then anyway just click to should i go ahead and click it yeah click it why not um oh. and you'll fill out the form and we are uh, sponsoring i believe it's well over 50 events where you get a bunch of free stuff from us so um, if you want your event if you're a tournament director um, if you want your event to get sponsored by us fill it out we look forward to sponsoring your tournament in 2019. Excellent. All right, if you want to bring us back to the us, Danny. All right, what do we got next? Uh, Winter Marksman oh. hey, League. Hey, Danny, why don't you go back to my laptop? <laughs> <laughs> okay. you, how come you can't control from one laptop to the other? Because I've got to control the questions oh. and then all the other stuff uh-huh. and the giveaways. So Winter Marksman League, if you haven't played in a Winter Marksman League, I tell you what, you really are missing out. This year there's been 132 leagues uh, that have registered and been uh, people have been playing in. There are no more no more leagues are being accepted for 2018-2019 uh, season, but uh, incredible numbers there. It's really fun to go through and look at the statistics that uh, you can see on Bobby's screen. Oh, We've sorry, got, I'm trying to uh, questions. Oh, no, you're all good. Yeah, go. If you, if, you, if you take a look, you know, 429,000 putts uh, have happened this year with over 190,000 made, 45% accuracy, accuracy rate. Um, and I, I love seeing the where people finish. I mean, there's a lot of recognizable names that are – uh, playing in the Winter Marksman League, and that's Charlie. I'm thinking that maybe is Charlie Goodpasture, James Conrad uh, for this last week leading Tennessee, uh, Eric McCabe leading Kansas last week with uh, a great 182 points. In his first round, he went perfect. So Eric McCabe's been the first person in Winter Marksman League history that made all five putts from all five stations in the first round. And um, unfortunately, he didn't go perfect, perfect the next uh, 
two two rounds, but um, is what it is, and that's an incredible incredible finish. Steve Brinster, uh, you know, at the, uh, at the top in New York, and it, anyway, you can go through there and look and see all the all the high profile players that are playing in the marksman leagues, and then it's also fun to see where. We've got events in uh, British Columbia, Italy, uh, the Yukon Territory, Prince Edward Island, Manitoba. Um, Latitude over 64 in, is Johannes Hogberg. Yeah, Johannes, He's what's on top up? in Sveridze, Sveridze. You guys know I'm bad yeah. at names. Anyway. Anyway. So, yeah. All right. We ready for the next one? Sure. If you All want. right. What, what do you say we talk a little bit of match play? All right, so you had there Matt Whitlock, the winner of last year's United States Amateur Match Play Championship. Uh, first place, uh, went home with 18 veteran baskets uh, to his heavy. Has he picked out a course yet? Has he got that I, figured out yet? I don't think he has yet. Okay, but he has 18 baskets ready to go for him and to get set up. And then, of course, discs for life. Um, so congrats again to Matt Whitlock. And that could be you, guys. That could be you. But, to, but first, we need people to start... Uh, getting uh, brackets ready to go and beginning February 1st, which is not too many days away, February 1st, you can start registering to be a TD for uh, match play in your area. Get signed up. Player pack for United States Amateur Match Play yep. Championship. The first opportunity to get the Keystone as well as the Lucid X Escape, Ooh, which I bet you a lot of people are excited about that players one. Players are absolutely excited about that one. So, uh, match play is a great, uh, great format, fun way to play. A uh, lot of, uh, a lot on the line. Um, if you can make it through your local qualifier, through your state, um, state finals, and then if you can come all the way to Emporia and be a part of the national championships here, it's a really unique, great experience, great opportunity. Um, hit up Matt Whitlock if you if you want to hear a, a good testimonial, and I definitely look forward to shipping out those 18 baskets so that he can put a course in the ground in his uh, local area. Absolutely. Real quick, I picked the name Joshua Easterling. You win the, uh, what was it? Uh, the patrol. patrol, the Dynamic Disc Patrol from the Trilogy Challenge. Uh, it's a lucid plastic. So email me at bobby, B O B Y, at dynamicdiscs.com. Let me know in the subject say, I am Joshua. I won the patrol. And then uh, I will get some information from you, from you to send that out to you. If Joshua doesn't hear this, then I guess we will give that away to, to the somebody next else person. sometime. Perfect. Down the road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back back to match play real quick. You know, if, if you didn't have a local match play in your town and are interested in hosting a match play event, um, definitely take the web give the give the website a, a look. Um, it's super easy to host a a match play bracket. You only need sixteen players. Um, UDISC is doing some things to allow the the interface to be that much more friendly for uh, for tournament directors or, or the host of the match play bracket. And I really encourage you to either host an event or get involved in an event because I think you're really going to uh, really really going to enjoy it. This, call this just in from Doug Bjorkus. Uh -oh. Just in from Doug Bjorkus. Uh -oh. Breaking news: uh, <laughs> TDs can sign up in UDISC starting February first. Players on February fifteenth. So Doug wanted to make sure we get that information out. So we now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Thank you, Dougie. Yes, thank you, Doug. <laughs> uh, speaking right. of Doug. Yes, yeah, speaking of Doug. The man behind the Junior World Championships. I Wait, just Doug, were you watching when we said sheriff? <laughs> if not, okay, so D Danny thought of this. Share, air, if. Share, air, if. Uh, if anybody would get that, I'd laugh at that, that would be Doug. Okay, sorry. Now back to Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, if, uh, if you haven't come to see us for junior worlds, we got the junior world championships, July 6th through the 13th, mark that on your calendar. Um, come bring your kiddo to become a world champion in Emporia. We've got the world championships last year was the first year we had it 198 players. Uh, we're striving for 300 juniors this year for the world championships. And then we've also got it, um, for 2020 as well. And we're really, really looking forward to continuing to growing, uh, the junior disc golf scene. All right, now we've got another giveaway. Uh oh! Get ready. This one is I just grabbed the Westside Discs Warship, a mid-range driver. The numbers are speed six, glide five, turn zero, and fade to one. So pretty straight mid-range for your game. I want to know in the chats. Get ready. I want to know what day 
can you register to be a TD to run a bracket for the United States Amateur Match Play? Go. Put it in the chats. Can you get a little bit harder on your questions, Bobby? No. I, I mean, we want to give this stuff away, <laughs> but we want people to participate. All right. So uh, while he's doing that, we have a, qu a couple questions that have come in that I was able to grab. Uh, let's see. Bro. When can we see the DD Patrol in different plastics other than Lucid? Uh, I don't know is the answer to that one. Um, right. Yeah. I don't know yet. Okay. That's all I got. Next question. Uh, uh, <laughs> when are we getting Blend Maidens? Blend Maidens. I need to know more about the release schedule. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a note of that. Next time, study release schedule. All right. So we're going to know the yeah. release schedule. So I'm not able. We've got people's guesses coming in, which is good. I don't know that I'll find, be able to find another question. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, Joshua says, thanks, Bobby. So good, good stuff. So Joshua is claiming his prize. Again, make sure you email me at Bobby at Dynamic Discs. Uh, Nick says we won't get a match play in his area. I wonder why. Maybe we can maybe we can help uh, Nick out with uh, trying to get some people to run a match play there. Nick, you should host one. You super, should host one. Yeah, super easy to host. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to pick a winner here in a second as the votes come in, or not the votes, but the answers come in. Before we go, let's see what do we got next. We are off the rails. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Coming back on. So here we're back on. So it's been about over five years since the last dynamic duel, and we discussed it and talked about it, and Anthony has brought them back. And what was that first duel? Wait a minute. You kind of oh, follow the script. Gosh. All right, so we've already put that one out. That was with uh, Paige and Emac versus uh, Eric Oakley and Isaiah Esquivel, and that has been awesome. It's already at like 40,000 views. It's an amazing thing to watch. I mean, it's all around good entertainment, but to watch Isaiah, the 13-year-old, yeah. get out there and crush it is re was really awesome. Um, so definitely go to YouTube. Well, of course, you know us on YouTube. You are... Uh, watching us on YouTube. But if you haven't watched the Dynamic Duel, make sure you go back and watch it. Uh, we do have one that Anthony is currently working on, and that one actually has Paige Bjorkis and Zach Melton paired up against Jordan Castro and Eric McCabe. So that's going to be a good one. And we are headed out to Memorial, and we're going to do some filming out there. And one of the things we're going to film is another Dynamic Duel. And this one's going to be Paige Pierce and Paige Bjorkis. So the Pages versus uh, Zach Melton and A.J. Risley. And this is one that we're going to tell – make. oh, what? What did I say? Go ahead. Oh, this is one that we're going to tell people to come out and yeah. uh, watch. So if you're in the Arizona area or if you're making a trip to Arizona to watch the memorial, and if you can be there on February 25th, uh, that Monday, come out and meet us at Vista at 3 p.m. and we're going to get that film. But uh, should it's we not going to be It's not going to be page and page versus oh. – they will be a part of. They're going to flip. For oh, we're going to flip. Oh, yep. I got you. My yep, bad. Yep, yep. My bad. But those are the those are going to be the four players that are going to be in it. So that's going to be super exciting. So now we're going to backtrack a little bit, should we? Yeah, backtrack a little bit. Who who was a part of the first duel dynamic duel? Wasn't that the one of very our highest? First, the watched? very first dynamic duel was Nico LaCastro versus Eric McCabe. Now this is back when we weren't manufacturing discs, and we were as an apparel and as a retail store, we were sponsoring a lot of the a lot of the top names you know now yeah. uh, were, were were was wearing the D's on their back. But the first one was Nico LaCastro versus Eric McCabe, and they played a course in Texas, the Lake Louisville. Yes, and uh, so that was really good. And actually, it you that used to be the highest viewed one of the highest viewed videos but now the second duel that we did that was Josh Anton and Paul Uliberry Paul Uliberry and um who else was on there it was uh Kale, Kale. and 
I can't remember who. You'll it was. just have to find out. You'll have, just to, have to go you'll look. Have to look. <laughs> that one actually hit. It has tipped over a hundred thousand views. Wow! So that one surpassed the other one, which I think was at seventy-eight thousand. So anyway, the duels are just kind of a cool, laid-back uh, uh, tournament-style coverage, but kind of. Uh, the players are a little more relaxed as far as competing, so you'll see some uh, really nice big shots going on. We so. got some amazing video. Yeah, we do. You guys do a killer job. You guys do an awesome job at watching <laughs> them, and I appreciate that. So you guys keep watching. Yeah, thank you. If you guys didn't watch, I don't know. All right, so we got <laughs> v votes that have slowed. The voting has slowed, or not the, the answers have coming in have slowed down, so I'm going to pick a winner. N Anthony does a fantastic job with our tournament coverage, our in the bags, the now the dynamic duels, but did I say Anthony? Yeah. Now, Danny, we're back, we're back on script, Danny. Danny <laughs> does an incredible job with his series. Of course, I'm sure you guys watch his YouTube channel. You learn from him. He does form breakdowns and stuff like that. And one of the projects that um, he has just really been doing a fantastic, fantastic job on is the physics of flight. And if you haven't seen it, he's put together a really quick promo to kind of show you the topics that he talked about in physics of flight three. Hey guys, Eric Oakley here. Hey everyone, Robert McCall here. This is Paige Bierkus, 2018 FPO World Champion. Hello. Hello, Paige Wave. I'm Danny, and in this last episode, we're talking about scrambling. Today we're going to be talking about putting. On this episode of Physics of Flight, we're going to be focusing on forehands. Let's go. Let's get started. All right, so there you go. So good stuff, Physics of Flight. Now, again, like I said, this is the third one. If you have not watched uh, Physics of Flight 1 or 2, it's all excellent information. We have a playlist out on YouTube, so you can go to our playlist set, um, on the menu, and you can watch those, sit back and watch those on your phone, your tablet, or on your TV. And it's just good stuff to, to learn. And uh, I already know that uh, Danny's working on Physics of Flight 4, which is going to be even more good stuff. So I picked a winner real quick before we go on to the next subject. Perfect. I did pick a winner, Eli Arnold. Uh, you can win this, or you can take home this Westside Discs Warship. Uh, again, Eli Arnold, let us know real quick in the chat. If you can, if not, no big deal, but go ahead and email me at bobby at dynamic discs. In the subject, put I am Eli and I want that warship. And then we're going to figure out how to get you that warship to you. Cool. Oh, oh. All right. Now, back on track. Back on track. Go ahead, sir. 2020 dynamic I'm give discs. give my brain a break mold. here. Yeah, Bobby, you're, you're, whew, take, yep, take, take a load off there. Okay, so. I uh, just kind of want to give everybody a little inside look of the, the timeline of, of things and how they come together. And uh, I find this one kind of interesting that it's probably hard to believe that, you know, our, our 2019 releases haven't even officially um, come out for sale yet. And, and those will be coming out. Um, Latitude 64, the, the release of the Recoil and the Pioneer are coming out here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and, and the only way to get those um, ahead of time if there's a buyback retail store um, in your area, uh, they will have the opportunity to pick up the, the special edition um, Pioneer and Recoil, and you have to physically go into the store to pick those up. So be on the lookout for those. Um, if your local, local store is not a buyback retail partner of ours, uh, make sure to let them know that you are interested in, uh, or you'd love to see them be a buyback retail store. And the cool thing about the buyback program is you can walk into any of those buyback retail stores mm -hmm. Pick up any disc from Dynamic Discs, Latitude 64, or West Side Discs and try it for two weeks. And if you don't like it, if it doesn't do what you thought it was going to do or what you wanted it to do, um, you can take that disc back and, tr and uh, get your credit for anything else in the store. And some of the buyback retail stores are going to start having this 100% satisfaction guaranteed sticker on them um, just to help. Uh, customers understand that they can try anything in the store um, and bring it back if they don't like it. So uh, anyway, back to the 2019 and 2020 releases. Our 2019 discs are coming out soon, but we are already planning for 2020. And the genius over there at Latitude 64, Thomas Ekstrom, um, he needs to know what we want to come out with for the 2020 season. Um, and so we are asking you to provide some feedback for us in the comments let us know what gap you feel like you're missing um, out of your out of your bag and maybe we'll be able to dial that release in for you for next year yes 
Did you say leave me in the comments below, right? Yeah, why not? All right, leave me in the comments below. Or email bobby at dynamicdisc.com. Or, yeah, just, just <laughs> overload send me those, his yeah, inbox. Send me those emails. I need more of them. <laughs> um, yeah, don't forget, if you do have questions, I know we're doing a lot of giveaways, and this was something new trying with the chats, but if you have any questions, I will try to grab them. Uh, a couple questions came in. Uh, when will the low 160 discs come in? He didn't say specifically which mold, but uh, I think we did say something about we heard them about air plastic. Yep. Do you have any uh, updates on that? Uh, more stuff is coming. They are working on it. Um, the Sheriff was one disc that we were not able to get down into lighter weight um, and or use air with. And this Air Sheriff is 159 grams and it's going to fly a mile. Uh, more of that, more lightweight is coming. Um, we hear you. Uh, someone wants to know about Dick's Sporting Goods. Are we back going to stock them back up with Yeah, CBD? Yeah, so we are uh, going to be in, it sounds like, 80 stores uh, for Dick's Sporting Goods for the 2019 season, and, and we are really looking forward to making sure that uh, uh, those shelves are stocked, and we encourage you to go to your Dick's Sporting Goods store, and if they don't have dynamic discs... Ask them. Ask them. Tell somebody. Uh, we have a gentleman on wants to know, his name is uh, Robert McHale. Uh, wants to know, it says that we need more wardens. Robert McHale. Thank you, Robert McHale. Berto Kale. Well, always working on something. <laughs> always more wardens. All right. It's all so coming. It's all coming. Where are we at? We're <laughs> all, okay, giveaway time. Uh-oh. All right, I got a Latitude 64 Musket Trilogy Challenge Edition. Again, these are these were discs that we used when we made. This one, I believe, is probably when... Me and Eric did the uh, Is This Disc Right For You series on Trilogy Challenge. So this has been thrown maybe 10, 12 times, 15 times. The musket is so underrated. It's such a great disc. Well, yeah, we're going to give this one away. All right. Hopefully you've been watching a while because this one you're going to have to reach back. And hopefully you were paying attention. And I hope you said it. Did you yeah, say, I okay, did. Okay, good, good, good. If not, the question, <laughs> if not, you can look at it. You can go to How many disc. marksman leagues do we currently have? If you don't, if you don't, if you don't remember from what Jeremy said, you can go to the website that we mentioned and find out. So put that in the chat of YouTube's, and yeah. we'll see if we can get a winner for that. We'll see how many people really guess on that one. Huh? All right. So what else do we have to talk well, about? Well, speaking of the new releases and whatnot, you know the one the one disc that we haven't mentioned uh, that we did finally get the mold in for uh, had a little issue, had to get repaired. Um, last week, Thomas sent a video and David sent a video over of the first test flight of the Raider, and they are super happy with, uh, with the flight of that disc. Um, Thomas's email is hello, American people. Uh, I've just witnessed the Raider make its first flight. Uh, it's a bit cold outside eight degrees Fahrenheit, eight degrees Fahrenheit, Woo. but he took, he took it as a man and flew pretty good. <laughs> 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 so anyway um i think it's a great disc one of the fun things I, I feel like from the email facts of the test uh disc the raider and lucid plastic weight 173 gram color whitish semi-transparent wind slight headwind a soft breeze eight degrees snow covered ice on a public road for the footing and the and the location shoes they were wearing sneakers um, and the distance was about 370 feet, uh, probably because they were frozen and it was the first uh, test throw of the day for Johannes over there. Um, anyway, uh, the Raider is coming out. We are really excited about it. They just got done um, running those for uh, the, the team prototypes, as well as there's going to be an opportunity uh, for our team trilogy members uh, to get their hands on a Raider before the release, which is slated for April. So, um, we'll have more information about how Team Trilogy members can get their hands on one. Um, really, really appreciate everything that all of our team members do as well as Team Trilogy. And if you haven't heard about Team Trilogy, um, I encourage you to check out their website, learn about Team Trilogy, and maybe look about how you can become part of Team Trilogy. Excellent. All right. I just picked the name Troy Aldrich for the Latitude 64 Musket. So, Troy, if you're watching, let us know in the comments or just simply send me an email. It says, I am Troy and I won the musket. And you're going to like it. Send it to bobby at dynamicdisc.com. Uh, more breaking news from uh, uh -oh. Doug. Oh he, oh, he has a question. We have a question straight from Doug Burgess. Oh. He wants to know where he can get the hoodie like the one Jeremy is wearing. 
Are we supposed to talk about that? I don't know. But Doug's trying to get <laughs> us in trouble. I, guess. I mean, uh, if Doug said it, I can't get in trouble, that's, right? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> to, he's the tournament director. He let me know in a meeting the other day. <laughs> he is the tournament director. <laughs> that's a little inside joke for you, Doug. So this hoodie is becoming one of my favorite hoodies, as well as several of the other uh, Dynamic Disc staff members that have been wearing them around here uh, at the warehouse. And uh, I guess you might just have to come see us at the glass blown open um, to – to check it out to see it maybe it's uh, maybe it's going to be maybe it's going to be something you're going to get speaking of the glass blown open um i think we should talk about the glass blown open i think we should too and then we should probably go take a nap yes we should a long we should. night yeah uh, <laughs> uh glass blown open hard to believe that that thing is already filled up and it's hard to believe that it's only a couple months away if you have not made your travel plans to come to emporia the last weekend in april uh, and you love disc golf, you are missing out on what I think is the best disc golf event um, for all around experience in the world. And even if you aren't playing uh, or aren't registered to play, there's so many activities and opportunities to do fun things in Emporia that I really encourage you to make the trip to Emporia and come hang out with us for, uh, for a portion of the week or the entire week. And one of the things that's happened that I think is going to be uh, the players are really going to enjoy is uh, a lot of changes were made at the Emporia Country Club. Eric McCabe uh, put his design hat back on. And, well, it never really comes off, uh, but there were a bunch of changes that, that happened out at the Emporia Country Club. And we're going to show a video at the end of this where Doug, um, wearing unapproved <laughs> dynamic discs... <laughs> Uh, Minnesota Vikings colors. Uh, he loves and, the Vikings more than he loves us. Yeah, but <laughs> Chiefs made it further. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't know. Come see us in Emporia for the glass blown open. Always working on something over here. It's hard to believe that it's already 2019, and uh, I'm ready for some warm weather. I'm ready to get out there and play some more disc golf, and uh, we'll be taking a trip out to Arizona uh, for the memorial. So. Um, Come see us out there if you're not planning on it anyway. We got one last uh -oh. disc to give away. This is the Westside Discs World. Uh, this is a uh, high-speed driver, speed 14, glide 4, turn 1, fade of 4. This is the VIP plastic. I want to know if you're paying attention, who was on the first Dynamic Duel? Who are the two competitors? Put those in the chat, and I will. we will check back in. I think we're going to do flip the script here a little bit, Danny. So we're going to check back in. As people watch um, Doug's video, I want to see in the chat. I want to see the answers, and then when we when the video's done, come back to me, Danny, and uh, I will pick a winner, and then we will end the show. Does that sound good? Sounds fantastic. All Thanks right. for tuning in, guys, and yep. we'll be back in a minute. Yep. Hey everybody, Doug Bjerkus here. We're uh, out at the Emporia Country Club and we're out here checking some of the changes that have been made to the Country Club over the last few days. We're uh, adding several tee pads, we're lengthening some tee pads, moving some pins, and kind of wanted to just take you guys out here uh, for a quick preview of the work that's uh, going on. So we're actually here on hole one right now and you can see that with all of the existing tee pads, we went ahead and extended them by four feet. Uh, a lot of folks have talked to us about uh, uh, making the pads longer out here, so uh, you guys are going to see some longer tee pads when you come out to the Country Club uh, this spring for the GBO. So hey, we're here on hole two now, and if you'll recall, those that have played the course, we used to tee off on the sidewalk right here to this long par four, and one of the things we wanted to do this year is to eliminate all tee boxes that were on sidewalks. So what we've done is instead of teeing off from here, you can see here we've got a 15-foot tee pad. We're really pleased with making these all four feet wide and 15 feet long. We're still going to play the fairway as out of bounds, kind of tighten up the fairway. So this is the short pad on hole two. It's a brand new tee box. We're going to use it for the FPO division for the glass blown open in April. Kind of a nice uh, gap you've got to hit here. Avoid OB on the right, avoid the OB on the fairway. Shortens the hole up a little bit and gives us a little more flexibility with the different divisions that we have playing out here at the Country Club. All righty, hole five out here at the Country Club is a fantastic par four. And if those of you that have played before recall that we had an entire area on this sidewalk that you could tee off from. And again, trying to keep people off the sidewalks and create tee pads. We have a long pad here, and you may be able to see the short pad up there. And we'll, we'll drive a little closer to that and get a look at that. But uh, hole four now has a long pad here, 
and a shorter pad about 150 feet up in the fairway there. Hole seven, we've made two changes. We changed the original tee box, took it off of the sidewalk, and have created this tee box, which is gonna be throwing through a chute out into the fairway. And then we also have a shorter box that we'll get to here in a little bit. But again, 15 foot tee pad, 15 by four. Really pleased with the way these turned out. And uh, I think at the GBO this year, the uh, MPO division is gonna uh, enjoy playing a hole that uh, in the past has tended to be kind of an easy birdie. We think this change will make it a little tougher on folks. So we're at hole eight, but what we're gonna do this year is actually this is one of the bigger changes to the course. We've extended the tee pad another four feet, but instead of playing to the traditional basket that we used to play to down by the water, we are now combining hole, seven, hole eight and hole nine to create a par five. And so you'll actually be teeing off from here to the basket uh, that has been used for hole nine in the past. So this will be quite a long hole. And in fact, when we get down there, I'm gonna show you that we're extending the old hole nine so that this hole gets a little bit longer, but this will be a true par five moving forward. So this is the new longer pin on what used to be hole nine. And again, as we talked about, hole eight and nine are gonna be combined to become a long par five. We're gonna use this pin position for the MPO and we're gonna keep using the existing position, which is about 80 feet shorter for the FPO division at the Glass Blown Open. So for new hole 10, to kind of put this into perspective, um, the original tee box is right back here, but we're gonna actually go for a little walk here. So it doesn't look like much now, but in the next couple weeks, we're gonna be trimming out a, I've just started the trimming out by knocking that piece of wood down, but. We're gonna have a tunnel shot that will extend. It'll be about a 280 foot tunnel shot that comes out of these woods, out to the fairway. Again, making this even more of a par four than it's been in the past, but giving our players uh, the, the challenge of having to hit a tight gap. And as many of you guys know, the country club has some awesome holes, but not a lot of really tight tunnels. We're excited about being able to add one of those shots here this year. Hole 12, as you can see, has a brand new tee pad. We used to tee off over here on the sidewalk, and again, we're trying to get off of the sidewalks. We'd also played this hole as an island, and we are no longer gonna play it as an island. Left of the sidewalk will be out of bounds, and then there'll be a fairway divider that divides old hole 11 and old hole 12, and that'll be OB to the right. But we think this is a great addition to the course, and we'll uh, uh, keep people off of the sidewalks. So earlier we mentioned that we were going to combine holes eight and nine to create a great par five. And if we do that, we need to come up with another hole. So after playing old hole 12, uh, we have a brand new hole. Here's the tee pad. It's going to be a birdie hole. It's uh, going to be oh somewhere around 300 feet for a backhand right hander. It'll be an Anheuser shot. You're going to have to get around these trees here to the right and the basket will be up past the big green tree uh, that's out in the middle of the fairway. So we're on old hole 14 right now, and uh, we, we didn't take you by 13 and long 14, but we did extend those tee pads by four feet. And then we did put a short pad on hole 14. Some of you may have recall throwing off of a fly pad on this hole. We've in the past put a fly pad here, but we do have a shorter tee box for hole 14, uh, which of course plays down by the, uh, the fence and the golf green uh, down at the end. So we're at hole 15, and uh, this is probably the tee pad that I have received the most complaints about over the last several years. It's on the sidewalk, it kind of has a downhill incline, and we have created a new standalone tee pad. This will serve as the official long tee pad for hole 15, and you can also see there's a short pad uh, for this hole as well that plays uh, a little shorter, makes the island a little more reachable, but uh, really excited to finally get people off of this slanted sidewalk on hole 15 here at the Country Club. So hole 16, many of you guys know this as our infamous island hole. Uh, in the past, we've had two tee boxes here. We've had our long tee box, which we did add four feet of concrete to. Uh, and then we, in the past, we've actually used a fly mat here, a fly pad, and we now have an official concrete tee that we're teeing off of on the short box for hole 16. What we have here is a new pin for hole 17. Part of moving the pin over here to the right as you look at it from the tee box, but it is gonna give players the opportunity to decide whether they wanna cut off 
the OB to get to this new pin or if they want to play it safe and kind of curl around a little safer. But we're really excited about this new pin on hole 17. So the last change at the country club is short 18. If you'll recall, the drop zone in the short tee used to be on the cart path right by the pond behind, uh, behind Danny over here. But this is the new pad, and this might be one of my favorite pads on the course now because it's gonna give you an opportunity when you're playing 18 to either play it safe and play up the left side of the fairway, or if you wanna bite off the right-hand side of the fairway and clear the water here, you can certainly do that too. I'm sure the FPO is gonna enjoy this hole and I'm curious to see how many of them are gonna take the right-hand route as opposed to the left-hand route. Well, hey everybody, uh, thanks for coming out here. Thanks, Danny, for being out here to give kind of a sneak peek of some of the changes that are coming up. We're gonna be working on maps over the next couple days and get specific distances and get all of that published. And uh, can't wait to get that out to all the players that are coming here in April to play the GBO. Thanks again for taking the time to check out the new changes at the Emporia Country Club. All right, so I picked. Oh, so good stuff from uh, Doug Birkus and Minnesota Vikings, and uh, <laughs> his his sponsor, Minnesota Vikings. Um, good stuff from Doug on some of the changes taking place on the Emporia Country Club, uh, which is going to be really good stuff. So the winner I picked is Tim Schellingberg. Uh, if you're still watching, let us know in the chat so I know you got it, uh, or just send us a an email at Bobby at dynamicdisc.com. Put in the subject, I am Tim, and I won. I want the world. The world is mine, or something like that. And I'll get information from you to figure out how to get this disc to you. Someone asked if this particular video with Doug is available on its own on the, uh, on the YouTube. We're actually contemplating redoing that video just so we can... Uh, just because Doug's wearing the Doug inappropriate <laughs> Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to make him wear a Chiefs something. No. Um, so we're going to redo the video and we'll, we'll put that together. And now we're contemplating. I'm not 100% sure, so we'll figure that out. If not, we'll put something out. We definitely have plans to put out some some course previews, some course information. So you'll be able to find that at glassbonopen.com once we get uh, the nicer weather here and get closer to GBO. And check out the GBO mobile app on iTunes and Google Play for sure. So that's all we have, right, Jeremy? That's all I got. That's all we got. Thanks. Oh, I did see oh. one. I did see one comment about moving to Emporia. Oh, yeah. I think that's all. I think it was from Tyler. It's so hard to find comments here where they're at but come come to emporia emporia is not just a disc golf destination it's a place to uh, it's a great community to live in and obviously we got plenty of disc golf that's happening here so uh come see us come move plenty of houses available well maybe there's not plenty of houses but they'll find you a house <laughs> we'll find you something <laughs> Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks again for tuning in. Dynamic Discs update with Jeremy Rusko. Again, we try to do this every month, um, sometime during the month. Um, what did we say we are going to? No, okay. So, anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next time. Out. Seacrest out. Over and out.